The other day I asked a room of uh, kids if they knew exactly where they were when the planes hit the Trade Tower and the Pentagon, their hands all flew up. I don't know that I should have been surprised, but I was, and it made me think, of course, that in another generation, people knew exactly where they were when John F. Kennedy was assassinated and exactly where they were when the Challenger explosion occurred. And, of course, it's that way with the Trade Towers. Robert Krulwich has a story now about a man who, when it happened, was caught in a traffic jam. It's odd, really, but now that they're gone, it's hard to remember where the towers were. They would stand up. Chase is 82 floors. You see the rectangular building there? 82 floors. We were 20 floors higher, just to the right of that. Guy knows because 40 years ago, he was called in by his boss at the New York, New Jersey Port Authority. And he says, Guy, now we have to build this thing. And he said, you're in charge. You're going to be in charge. I'm going to create a super department called the World Trade Department. And that was the beginning of an extraordinary relationship. Those towers were, were, were an identity for me. They, it was like the world was OK. They were there, and I'll be there. I've been in them since they started when we moved in. Guy is not a native New Yorker, though you wouldn't know it. Do people ever think you're from Kansas City? Or... No, they believe I'm from New York. <laughs> they say that. I hear that all the time. And I'm not. I'm from New Jersey, but maybe it's the same. But what, are they, what, is, what is it? Is it the vowels or the gravel? I or... haven't the slightest idea. It might be the gravelly voice that I have. I can't help it. You know, over the years, I talk a lot, probably. Forty years ago, Guy was a young engineer working for the agency that built bridges and docks in New York's harbor. And in those days, as today, Lower Manhattan was in big trouble. People were leaving, businesses were leaving. So the businesses down there wanted a project to revitalize the neighborhood. David Rockefeller, who ran the Chase Manhattan Bank, and Nelson Rockefeller, who was the governor of New York, came up with the notion for a World Trade Center. And after convincing the governor of New Jersey, the project was eventually assigned to Guy Tuzzoli. I was in New York, the greatest city in the world. There was only one thing to do. What? make a program for the largest project in the world. Guy decided, and it was Guy more than the governors, that the project should have 12 million feet of office space and a plaza and a huge parking garage and shops and a mall. The Reader's what, Digest. New York, it has to be big? Yes, absolutely. If you want it to be successful, Lower Manhattan was dying. It needed an anchor. It needed something around which people could, could build. And, and what, like Frank Sinatra singing in your head something about biggest town, big city, big, 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 big New York big, is big, big, big. It always has been. It's a great city. It's the greatest city in the whole world. Early on, Guy decided not to go just for a big building. He wanted the biggest buildings, the biggest in the world, as he told his neighbor. He said, Biz, you know something? This is going to be big. <laughs> he said, this is going to be really something big. And he said, it's going to be something in the last. And so, in the late 1960s, the towers began to rise. Thousands of workers swarmed to the sites, putting up those signature frames that would become the skin of the buildings. And then, matter-of-factly, a quarter mile up in the air, they sat, they welded, they stood, backs to the wild air. Stop the tape. Look at that. The weather changed constantly. In the winter time, there's ice up there, there's snow, there's rain, it's cold, 5 degrees, 10 degrees. When it's 20 degrees in the street and you're up 84 floors, it's like it's 10 below, you know? So, uh, and the wind, the wind factor is very bad, even right now on that side on the, on the uh, wall over there. You, know, you can hardly work over there. But they kept going. Guy in charge, holding meetings all day long that lasted 17 minutes. That was his rule. 17? Yes. I don't know why I picked 17. Yeah, it's not a round number. No. But that was it. You want, you want an answer? You come in and tell me in 17 minutes. He was building, he was leasing, he was politicking, and he was doing some public relations work. He got some girls from his Jersey neighborhood to be tour guides, and they had to memorize a speech. And people listened. It was like, whoa! Can you remember the speech. opening line? Yes. It's, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the site of the World Trade Center. What if it were like 11 a.m.? Hmm? Did you do temporal changes? <laughs> no, no, it was always <laughs> afternoon, because they came out at afternoon oh, for lunch, night. yeah. Okay. It was like, this, it was like again, the lunch Good show. afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, and ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the site of the World Trade Center, future home of trade and commerce. 
We want people to start to like the World Trade Center. So? Yes, we were looking for attractive young ladies to give their spiel. There's nothing bad about that. Well, now, was Outdoor there a dating job. rule? Were you allowed to date people? Nobody on the said site? we couldn't. Ah. Uh-huh. And so we oh, did. So there are fringes did. here there that are I have definite but, benefits. No, but there was, there was, there was uh, the, the guys, the workers were, were very protective of us. They took them up on open elevators, 110 stories, just to see the view. But what Liz particularly remembers is the bottom, the foundation, the hole that they dug deep down, walled against the Hudson River. I think of that pit, and I think of how hard they worked to make that foundation as strong as it could possibly be. Anything that was even minutely wrong with that foundation, they would tear it out and do it again, because they knew it had to be just so. And when I think of the World Trade Center, I think of that first. Mm -hmm. And then I think about how everybody else thinks about it. When the building opened, Guy moved in. Where's your office? My office is on the north face. On the 77th floor. So when you look out, you look... I used to look right down on Manhattan. It was beautiful. And he stayed. And when he retired, he stayed again. He ran the Association of World Trade Centers from an office in the same tower. And then came September. Were you as surprised as everybody else when the buildings fell down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The last thing in my mind was that this building would ever collapse. Guy saw the towers fall from across the river. He'd been caught in a morning traffic jam. There is no question. If I had gotten to the building, I'd be dead today. I would have stayed in that building. I tried like mad. I talked to Port Authority police in the Holland Tunnel to let me get through that tunnel. I wanted to go and help, okay, and help people out, whatever I could do. This was my project. It was his project, but not only his. When Liz and Jane saw the site, the first thing they saw was the wall that their boyfriends had built 30 years before. I said, there's the wall that they worked so hard on, and it is there. And that meant a tremendous amount to me that the whole thing came down, but when they cleaned it all out, it was there just like they built it. And I, I know that probably sounds really stupid, but... Because she and Jane had been there at the very beginning, at the birth. And I thought about, about being there, sort of, uh, it was my World Trade Center. Right. And it was his, and it was his, and most of all, it was his. Hard to remember now, there was a huge amount of resistance to the World Trade Towers when they were first proposed. And now, of course, uh, the city and ultimately, I think, the country will be deeply embroiled in, we hope, a positive way about what is built in its stead, what kind of memorial it will be. The city and all concerned, families very deeply involved in this, um, approaching it so far with a deep sense of commitment and responsibility.